Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Emily Lucy Ratch. I have an Instagram, a TikTok, and now a YouTube channel with nearly 5,000 subscribers, which I am so thankful for all you guys entering the giveaway. So if you are new here and you have never seen any of my content before, I am a mid-size, 12 to 14 specifically, um, content creator. So my content is all about helping women who are a similar size to me and making them feel good because, let's face it, when you go into the shop or you shop online, there is no mid-size representation. It's literally either size 6 to 8 models or it's plus size. So we kind of fit in the middle and we just feel like no one represents us. So when we're shopping online or we're shopping in a shop, we have no idea what it's going to look like until we try it on. And that is a pain in the ass. So that's why I'm here as your mid-sized personal shopper to give you some advice and also try everything on. I am the guinea pig. I literally love to try different styles on and we either love it or we hate it. So welcome to my channel and let's get started with today's vlog which is all about mindset, confidence, body positivity. So let's get comfy, grab a cup of tea and let's have a chat. So first of all, I want to talk to you guys about body confidence and this is something that I get in my DMs daily, people saying to me, love how confident you are, I wish I was like you, I'm jealous of how confident you are, why is this not how I feel about myself, like, can you help me, can you make me feel more confident and obviously all of those things I want to give to people, I want to be able to say to somebody, this is what you have to do to be like this, but it's not as easy as that, it all comes from within. So I think for me to be able to explain a little bit more on what's changed for me and why I am accepting of how I look and the size I am compared to how I used to be, I think I need to tell you a bit of a backstory on my life. I'm 30 years old now and I can say throughout my life I have very, very much struggled with body image, whether it be from being younger and the trends that were around in the late 90s to early noughties to just being, you know, around women of all different shapes and sizes and kind of comparing myself to other people. And I think that's one of the things that as I've got older, I've really learned how to stop myself from doing. And that's kind of what I'm about. I really want to help people change their mindset to feel good about themselves and not concentrate on how much they weigh or what size they are. Because I can tell you firsthand, I have been a person who has been obsessed with the gym, so going to the gym all of the time, like six days a week, two hours at a time. Also controlling every single thing that I ate. I've never had an eating disorder or anything like that, but what I have had is a very structured routine in how I wanted to be perceived by people. I found myself going to the gym a lot and eating healthily, and that's when I met Anthony, my partner. He's always been really into fitness and that kind of rubbed off on me. At that time, I was really obsessed with going to the gym. We'd even walk to the gym and walk back after doing a two hour session, like we were very obsessed with the gym. And there is nothing wrong with that. My problem with how my mindset was at that time is that I wasn't doing it for myself, I was doing it for other people. Because I wanted other people to think I looked a certain way or because I was comparing myself to people on social media and I also wanted all Anthony's friends to think he had an attractive girlfriend because obviously I was just new on the scene. We were going on holiday to Ibiza and I just literally took it to the extreme. I was exercising every single day, I was eating such limited calories, I lost loads of weight, I was really, really lean and then after that I started my fitness page on Instagram and it was all about different workouts, I was working with um, different gym chains. I'm not saying what I was doing was a bad thing, I was very healthy, I was exercising all the time, I'm not saying or denying that is something that is wrong. So after that, I was approached by a fitness brand to do a fitness shoot and they were going to fly us out to Cannes which was like amazing opportunity. Remember at the time, I made sure my calories were really low. I was working with um, a bodybuilding coach because I wanted to look so lean for the shoe. And I was having egg whites, asparagus every morning. Um, I was having like six meals a day. I was drinking so much water, not a sustainable way of life. I don't have enough time in a day to sit down and eat six meals a day and cook six meals a day and have asparagus for breakfast. Like it was the cost of the, like it was just, all of it was just ridiculous. So I fly tomorrow to Cannes, but I just wanted to, film this little video of me looking vile because <laughs> I've just been on the Stairmaster and done that whole workout I'm sweaty to say anyone that is on prep for longer than 10 days 
I have got the utmost respect for you because this is fucking horrible and I've been ill, I've got a sore throat, I've been off work, I've spent most of my week in bed because my body's just in shock that I've done this to my body and I would never recommend this to anybody. It is unachievable for a realistic, normal day of life. Like, there's just no way you can keep it up. There's no way I could eat that little and be that strict. Like, I even got rid of having protein shakes because it had sweeteners in the protein shakes. Like, I was having no chocolate, nothing, no pop, no squash, nothing. It was literally like water, eggs, fish, veg. Like, my plate was majority green veg, I'm not the same there's anything wrong with it but it's just like such a controlled way of life I couldn't have a social life I couldn't drink alcohol I couldn't do anything as time went on and I got closer and closer to the shoot I was like picking myself apart or I remember actually being there on the shoot day I felt like my bum had really deflated and my legs looked too skinny and I felt like really gone so I was like oh I need to I need to train before I'm with those like bands around my legs like exercising doing like um just anything I could do to make myself like look better so in my head, I realised at that point, I had been so strict with my diet, every day checking in with my coach, eating stuff that was like, not what I wanted to eat, and exercising like crazy, and I still wasn't happy with how I looked. I still was pulling myself apart, I still was nitpicking, I was still like, mm, I could be skinnier, mm, my stomach could be leaner, like my abs aren't showing. So, no matter how thin I get, how well I eat, how much I train, how much I am dedicated to being in this fitness frame of mind where I was on like a boot camp routine, I'm still not happy with my body. So why not just enjoy my life? I'm not saying I'm not gonna go to the gym, like I love exercising, it makes me feel so good. There's nothing better than going to the gym for a good hour, putting my earphones in, I'm just like having a great workout and then after you finish you're like oh my god I feel so good that endorphins are like so good. So I'm not now saying that I've changed my life into an unhealthy one, that is not the case at all. What I've done is just told myself to chill out, like why am I so obsessed with being something I'm not. I haven't been weighed for a long time and I'm probably the heaviest I've been in a very long time but I don't, I honest to god can't tell you how much I don't care. I don't know what it is, I've just thought to myself, and I feel I feel like it's really a lot stronger since lockdown's happened, where I'm just like, there's bigger things in life than how much I weigh and what dress size I am, like, come on. People are dying and it's just not important. Like, that's, that's the best way I can kind of describe it, that I've literally gone from one extreme to the other, and it's it's brought me to this place where I'm just like, if you're enjoying another take, having a takeaway on a Friday night, have a takeaway on a Friday night. If you're enjoying having a glass of wine on a Wednesday, have a glass of wine on a Wednesday. If you enjoy going for a six mile run, go for a six mile run. Just do what you want to do. Like there's just, I don't understand where this thing in society has come from where we have to conform to these ridiculous pressures and standards that we put on ourselves. Like, this is the biggest thing that I can tell you from this video and I hope that you take this away. If you release and let go of whatever it is that you're scared to tell people, or you're scared for people to know about you, it'll be the most liberating feeling in your life. If you're scared, if you're editing your photos right now on Instagram, whether you've got, you know, 100 followers to 6 million followers, if you are editing your photos to look a different way, or you're living this lie, it is exhausting because you're kidding yourself. And other people can see that. Just be yourself. Just let it go. Let people see the real you. And I promise you, you will feel amazing. Just be you. I'm obviously not telling you to, you know, eat, eat crap every night and, you know, have a very unhealthy diet. I'm not saying that. I'm telling you to have a balanced diet. I suggest you work out. It's just a really amazing thing for your mental health, for your body, how you feel, everything. It's just a good thing to do for your body. What I'm not saying is for you to go to the gym and then restrict your calories and then be on a diet and then be tracking yourself with getting weighed. No. I know how it feels to be very insecure about how I look, comparing myself. I remember 
I used to follow all these like fitness and like Instagram models. How I didn't look like them and my, my waist wasn't thin enough to my hip ratio. And I used to compare myself so much. It's actually disgusting when I think about it. Like I was obsessed. And now I look back, I'm like, what the hell was that about? You're having like an episode girl because that is not you at all now. I just don't think like that anymore. I can't explain it other than these steps that I've done, which I'm going to share with you now, has all worked together to make this happen. Well, number one, number one, remove toxic people from your life. I have had, ugh, some awful people in my life where they, one, made me feel bad about myself, two, they've actually gone out of their way to make me feel bad about themselves, to make themselves feel better, and three, they're just shit people and you don't need them. And in the majority of the time, these people who are like toxic or just not very nice and you're kind of in this like spiral with them where they are manipulating you into thinking that they're your friend or your boyfriend and that they care about you and they love you, but really all they care about is themselves. And they don't want you to leave. So what they will do is make you feel small so you, that you think they're big. I've had it with past relationships, one in particular where he would just say shitty things to me, awful things like saying that I needed liposuction and comparing me to other girls. I've wrote about this before on my blog um, about mental health, but he would like fancy girls that were so much taller than me and be like, oh, you're so short, I wish you were taller. So. Removing those type of people from your life will 100% make you feel better. If, you're, if your social media is full of girls that you are wishing you look like, you need to unfollow them because you're in a, you're in a bad headspace if that is what you are doing on a daily basis. Like, yeah, obviously getting a tip from people is amazing and I follow people who've got completely different body shapes to me, but I don't look at them and think, oh, I wish I looked like that. Like, I don't, there's not one person I follow on social media now where I think, Wish I look like that. And if I find myself looking at those people, I literally stop myself because something I have realised from being in this game now of working in social media and, you know, being on social media every single day. Like before I did this as a full time job, I worked in social media for Pure Gym as their social media manager. So I was looking at fitness people all day, every day. And one thing I've realised from this industry is that nobody looks that good. Honestly, if you're sat there looking at people on social media and you're thinking, oh my god, look at her bum, look at how she looks there, look at this. It's all angles, it's all photoshopping, it's all, it's everything, it doesn't exist. Like, there's more people who have like been posted online for not looking how they actually look and they're in that really toxic spiral that I mentioned at the start of this video where they feel the pressure to be something that they're not. They don't look like that and that's what really affects people. They need to look a certain way or have plastic surgery and take it to the extreme because they're trying to look like an edited version of somebody else and that person doesn't even look like that. I cannot stress that enough to you. This is where people go terribly wrong where they try to look like something that is actually not really attainable. There's some really amazing accounts on social media that I highly recommend that you follow and have helped me so much realise that other people are like waking up to that this is the way of life. Uh, Alex Lighton, so I'm going to put her, I'm going to put her here, and I absolutely love her posts so much. One in particular, this post I'm going to show you now, is the one where it shows these women are all the same way. So, I've been trolled to death on TikTok because I keep saying I'm a size 12 to 14, and some women can't accept that I'm 5 foot 3 and I'm a size 12 to 14, because obviously I'm so short, my weight and size variation is going to look different to somebody who is 5 foot 10, 5 foot 9, 5 foot 7. Like everybody who is a different size and a different shape is going to weigh a different amount. So why are we looking directly at these metrics and judging people? I'm going to go into that topic because I feel like if I go into that topic I'll be whoosh, ranting and we don't need to. But I really recommend following her because I love these posts that she does. And she also did one the other day which I loved and it was the ideal female body shape through time and it just goes to show how much trends come in with body shapes and how you are a certain size or a certain shape at a certain time in life, your body is idolised more which is just nuts, like it's absolutely nuts. So I really recommend following her. Another girl that I follow who is really helping put 
these things that I'm saying to light and showing people that influencers and celebrities feel the pressure to look a certain way. Angles, Photoshop, lighting all play a huge part in how someone looks. This toxic like idolization of women where it's kind of like we look like that. Like it's not real life. We've got like a show reel of how we look. You might have seen someone on social media and been like oh my god they're so attractive and then you see them in real life and you're like they look different. Of course they're gonna look different because it's a photo or a video and there's lighting. I've got, I've got a light on me right now making me look better. And I've got my makeup done and my hair done. And I've, yeah, it's, it's not real life. And I think that's so important that as women, we try and help younger women see that. And we really celebrate people who are bringing attention to these matters. And the fact that we need to educate women and men to see that this is... There's a real and a fake. Real is better. Being real is better. So the other woman I want to show you is Lena. I think I'm saying it correctly. I can't, I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing her name wrong because I absolutely love her. I showed one yesterday or the day before and it was um, Fitspo for how to get a bigger bum with the camera. I love her content and I think it's amazing that she sh she shares how she looks good in certain angles and lighting um, and it's yeah. just real. And Next one is having a hobby. So I first started doing social media, my Instagram account, blog, all was my hobby. So I loved doing it and it was my hobby. It, that's when I think our relationship flourished because I wasn't just kind of like waiting for my friends to be available or waiting for my boyfriend to be available to do stuff with. It was kind of like, I've got my own thing going on. Like, oh, I'm going to events, I'm doing this. And oh, I can't come here because I've obviously got to shoot content. It was my thing, like, it's just, it makes me who I am. And because I am so passionate about it and because I love doing it and I love helping women and I love talking about stuff and trying stuff and just, yeah, like it makes me happy. Another friend that I've not seen in absolute ages who has been away for a long time and she's come back into my life now. She's like, this is the happiest I've ever seen you. Like, you are so at peace with who you are as a person. And I'm like, yes. And that's kind of happened naturally. Just finding myself by doing stuff that I'm passionate about. And if I feel a certain way, I'm not scared to share it. So that's number three. It was number three or four. I can't remember. I've been talking a lot. Um... Finding clothes that fit you and look good for your body shape is an individual thing. Your friends might be all different shapes and sizes and what works for them is not going to work for you necessarily. So, I have been guilty of this in the past myself where I've been like, oh, absolutely love Ashley and Mary Kate Olsen. Absolutely love Alexa Chung's style. Absolutely love that style so I'm going to try it. And then I try my body shape and I'm like, no does not complement my shape at all or look good. So it's all about trying new things and testing out what, what works for your body shape and just like being an individual, like it's it's good for you to like go on, go on a website for instance and I honestly highly recommend doing this. I've done this so many times myself where I've ordered loads of different things that I wouldn't necessarily wear or would think that's disgusting. And then I've got it and this kind of happened for me more so when I first started working with brands and I had like a selection of clothes to choose from and I'd be like, well, I really want to work with that brand, but I hate everything that they've given me because it's not necessarily something I would wear. And then I've had to choose and it's come and I've been like, actually, I look really good in that. And it happened, it happened quite a few times and then that's when I kind of ch started changing how I dress because I was like, oh, like these things look really good and I didn't expect them to. I honestly highly recommend doing that where, obviously if you, it's a pain in the ass to take things back with online shopping, but if you order so much, it's a bit different in a shop because the whole process of like trying stuff on in a shop, I hate it with a passion. I'm all hot and like I'm in a confined space and someone's asking me if I need, I don't know. I don't like, like I just order them. Largest selection of different things that you wouldn't normally try and I know a lot of the girls that have messaged me on Instagram have said they have taken my suggestions and it's something they would never ever wear and they've tried it on and it looks amazing and they're just like shocked in the fact that that's happened. 
So I do know that this method has worked for people. And just try new things, try different styles of tops, try different styles of sleeves, try different styles of high-waisted trousers, low-waisted trousers, straight leg, wide leg, just just be adventurous, try loads of different things, even down to like body con dresses, like a lot of girls I know will be like, I can't wear a body con dress, I'm really insecure about certain parts of my body, just try it, you might be like, damn. So that is step four. Step five on my mindset journey is do things that make you feel extra special. Little steps that I do to make myself feel good. So when I look in the mirror, I'm like, yes, you're looking like the, the best version of yourself right now. Imagine this scenario. So you get your hair done, you put some fake tan on, you put the little stud earrings in, you put a bit of moisturiser on, nice perfume, false eyelashes, or you even go and get your makeup done, you go get your nails done, you literally are feeling like the best version of you. That person who sees you in the street doesn't know there's another version of you, they just know that version of you. That person that like sees you for the first time is gonna be like, look at that confidence, like she looks like, mm, she looks good. They're gonna like have this image of you because the way that you see yourself in that moment is how you feel and then that's how that other person feels about you. If you're like stood there like, feel insecure, hate myself, like ugh, negative, 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 you're projecting to everybody else to see you in that way, negative, like no. Do not wanna see yourself like that. You wanna be like, this is the best version of me. So doing little steps, as I've mentioned, is the key to feeling good. Growing confidence, projecting this confidence, projecting this aura, projecting this best version of you, hun. Step five. I've always touched on this one as well, but I'm gonna go into it a little bit more, and that is exercise. So exercise for me, as I've mentioned, has been a journey. But I've got to a stage now where I love weight training because, like I said, put my earphones in, have a great time lifting weights, see how far I can push myself, how far, how strong my body is, like how far I can run on a treadmill, how far I can walk on a treadmill, how far I can push my body is like a little challenge that I have for myself and I'm just like, yes, you are strong. And I love it, I love to train in the gym. Not because I'm dieting, but because I'm having like a little challenge with myself where I'm just like, but you can't lift that way. But you can't lift 30 kg today. I'm like, yeah, I can. I have these little arguments with myself in my brain. And I've got my music on, which I love. And I'm having just some really nice me time. But I'm also exercising and feeling good about myself. So those natural endorphins are being released while I'm having some me time. It is the perfect combination. And I cannot stress to you enough. If you've never been to a gym in your life or you've never worked out in your life and you're like, not for me. Just go on YouTube and watch. There's a workout video, just even if it's like kettlebell workout or like I love deadlifts. Deadlifts is one of my favourite all time exercises. It's where I'm not gonna do it right now because I'm wearing shorts and a shirt. It's not really the most deadlift criteria outfit, but it's basically where you get like a barbell with the weights on the end and you lean over and you pick it up so it's your back exercise but it's also for your bum and your legs, it's a compound exercise. I remember when I'm training with Anthony, um, sometimes he'll like spot me and I'll try and go as, ha as heavy as I can and then that's when I've seen the best results in muscle gain with my legs being tight, my arms, my body, like obviously I'm not going to the gym to lose weight or look a certain way but I just find training, weight training especially, makes me feel good because I feel strong strong and sexy and healthy so highly recommend that next one i can't remember what number we're on now so i'm probably going to just not say any more numbers because it's not going to match when i edit this video up the next one is talk about your feelings so this one's quite deep i'm not going to go into it too much because i'm not a psychiatrist i'm not trained in any life coaching or anything like that and i don't think it's my place to tell you how to feel or what to say but hand on heart i can tell you as I mentioned, I'm a massive overthinker and sometimes I have had these like scenarios and arguments in my head with myself where I've thought that's how Auntie's feeling or I thought that's how my friends are feeling about me or that's how work's thought about me. And when I've actually spoke to somebody about these feelings that I'm having, they've been like, 
sorry, what? And I'm like, yeah, but you obviously think that. And they're like, no. So I've learned to out my insecurities, not in a way where I'm like, oh my God, please compliment me because I hate my thighs. It's more as me saying to my partner or friends or family or work colleague or whatever it is in the scenario that I'm overthinking or worrying about and just saying, I know this sounds crazy, but this is how I feel right now and I feel I feel shit in the situation and you've made me feel shit in the situation. You might not have realised that you've done this, but that's affected me in this way. And that person's like, oh, I had no idea. I'm so sorry, I won't do that again. And a lot of the time, people, I am guilty of this myself. I don't realise that I have done something or acted a certain way or said something in a way that someone's misinterpreted it and that's offended somebody or that's upset somebody or they thought I don't care or they thought that, I don't know, people people can really think about things in a different way to how you think about things so unless you actually talk about it then it won't ever change. So sometimes actually talking about things will again set you free, make you feel good, make you feel confident, make you feel in control of a situation where you are open with somebody and you're telling them that, hey, that upsets me when you do that. So again, I'm not gonna go too deep into this. As you can tell, I'm like touching at the top level of this because I'm not qualified to give anybody advice. But I think talking about how you are feeling is a very positive, constructive thing for your mental health and confidence. Next is stop getting weighed. So, I think I've touched on this already, but one of the worst things I used to do when I was younger is be on the scale. I'll be on the scale every day, like check in, have a lost weight. The first thing you can do is be obsessed with getting weighed and what size you are and just having this really toxic association with your body and how much you weigh and even down to, and I'm this is embarrassing for me to admit, but I have been that guilty of the size of my pants. Like, in my mind, <laughs> I want my pants to be really small, but I want my bum to be big. Like, how does that work? So obviously, like, when you first start seeing someone and, like, your underwear's on the floor and you're like, is my pants too big? Like, is that not the most mental thought? But it happens. We put such pressure on ourselves to look a certain way, be sexualised in a certain way, be this perfect person and the two don't correlate together what I just said. Society, we have to have a big bum but we want small pants. Just think about that one. Next is the final one which is don't invest all of your energy into someone you just met. Don't have such high expectations of people. So in terms of dating, I know friends of mine, people who I've spoke to, and even myself, you can be very guilty of investing so much time into someone that you've just met or putting too much expectations on that person. So you go for a date maybe for the first time, you've been chatting for a while and you go on a date and you're like, mm, no, it wasn't right that. But is it? Or have you just not given them a chance? Like, I know firsthand, even me and Nancy on our first date, we were pretending to be completely different people. Like, the way that we are as people now, obviously we've been together a long time, but, and we've grown together, but the way that we were in the first day was kind of like, there's, yeah, you're just not being yourself, so how can you ever understand if that person is for you, if you're, then neither of you are being yourself? So I really recommend giving people more of a chance don't have too many expectations of people. Don't just write people off straight away. Like, give people a chance. And also, as a society, we are very guilty of seeing a finished product. So you can see someone and be like, oh, they live at home. They don't have a car. No. But really, are you a finished product? In how you feel right now, are you a finished product? Are you your goal? Are you at your peak of who you could be as a person. If you are, then great. I personally think everybody can grow and be better in some way. But we are so programmed to 
want the finished article. So if you're speaking to a guy or you are dating a guy and you've got all these weird things in your head, why? Like, I can honestly tell you firsthand, being in a relationship where both people help each other grow to be better people is much more rewarding than being two finished products going together. I know we are so guilty of putting expectations onto people and also like trying to find somebody to complete us and be the finished article to rescue us and be, you know, this person that gives you everything that you need. You need to be the person that gives everything that you need unless you are confident in who you are and that you're growing and being a better person you will not find another person to complete that. You need to be on your own journey. There's no perfection and we need to, as people, realise there is no perfect. And just set yourself free, be who you want to be, do what you want to do, make mistakes, learn from your mistakes and just be kind to yourself. Like, we're so guilty of being so harsh to ourselves and why? Just be good to yourself. So this is a bit of a different video to what I usually do, but I just, I've been getting so many messages about it and I thought I really want to share some things that I've learned through my experiences and obviously some of them I've not gone deep into, um, but if you guys want to ask any questions or you want me to kind of talk a little bit more on one of the topics that I've spoken about, then please let me know in the comments and if you like this kind of video, let me know. I can do more like chatting videos um but the next video we're back doing either some hair a family hair video or i'm going to do a styling video on how i choose certain items for my body shape off other people so i'm going to do a video on that so that will be coming very soon thank you so much for watching my videos and subscribing and i know i've spoken a lot here but <laughs> i hope you found it rewarding and helpful in any tiny way thank you so much for watching my videos guys